why do we study personality types? So that we can more easily categorize and label ourselves and other people, so that we don't have to guess or wonder about what to do anymore, so that we can just do and make decisions based on our own or the personality type of other people. Do we personality type because we want the world to be simple and easy? Or do we personality type because we want to better understand how we can grow ourselves and better ourselves and change ourselves and improve our connection to the world around us? I believe personality psychology and the goal of personality psychology is to enter into a flow state. But what does that mean? Find out about that and more in today's video. And of course, don't forget to click the magical subscribe button. The way I see it, the flow state is the goal of typology. The personality type is the pathway to flow. That means by understanding your personality type, you know everything you need to do in order to enter into a flow state. And what is flow? Flow is everything in you coming together as one. That means transcending your personality type. That means no longer seeing yourself as an introvert or an intuitive or a feeling or a judging type. You are none of these things. You are all of these things. You are all personality traits and all cognitive functions. However, some of them are experienced differently than others. So what you want to understand is how you experience the cognitive functions and how you awaken and trigger and move into a state of increasing momentum and energy. If you understand your personality type, you know exactly where to start. You know the base attitude, the base direction towards which your energy should start and flow. That means if you're an introvert, you need to know that you, your energy starts inside and needs to be expressed outwards. If you're an extrovert, your energy starts in the outer world and your conception of the outer world and then moves inwards. Flow suggests that everyone has a base set of interests or values that are important to move towards. Yes, you need to move towards the interests and values that put you into a flow state and you need to move away from the things, the attitudes and the values that cause you stress. That means you need to find smart ways to resolve your stressors, recognize that the opposite of your personality is your shadow. And that means that is the oppositional force that you are constantly going to have to deal with in your life. You have a movement towards something and you have a movement away from something. And that's movement. And by understanding that movement and understanding that both of those things are part of you, you can understand how to maximize your energy. Because you can't blindly chase towards your values. You can't blindly move towards a utopia. Utopia does not exist. Pure happiness, pure joy does not exist. Everything you do creates a counter reaction. Everything you do creates new problems to be solved. However, you must step into and allow these things to happen. That means you must allow the fact that you're going to do things and you're going to pursue your passion. But by doing so, you're going to have to accept that in the pursuit of your passion, you're going to run into problems. Energy is actually only felt when we do what we love and when we overcome what we hate or struggle with. That means we have to learn how to overcome and work through our tendencies while pursuing our passion. Flow is a multifaceted experience. It's an experience of energy from pursuing your hobbies or interests, for example, intuition or sensing, or from expressing or moving towards your core values that could be feeling or thinking, or in the way that you want to move towards things that could be introverted or extroverted, or judging or perceiving, control or freedom. So how and what are you gonna need to do in order to trigger a flow state well beyond moving towards your passion and beyond facing and acknowledging stress you're gonna have to practice vulnerability vulnerability is a key component to flow flow only happens when we let go that means you move towards your passion but you do so in a vulnerable open authentic manner no games no lies no deceit you're gonna have to learn how to express and fight for what you want in an honest way, in a way that will make you sleep well at night.
if you do things the wrong way or for the wrong reasons or with the wrong intentions, you're going to find that you're lying to yourself. And you're going to find that you don't believe in yourself anymore. You lose energy when you degrade it into something less than what it should be. You lose motivation when you degrade your values or your cause to something worse than what it is. So vulnerability requires you to step into and recognize not just what you do, but also how you are a part of your environment. You are not just one person, one singular divine being living alone in a world that does not exist. No, you are a part of a universe, a part of an island group. There are things around you, people, environment, workplace, relationships, and you are and gonna, are going to have to learn how to navigate and move in that space. And that means no knowing how to tap into energy and things that give you energy. Yeah, if you blindly chase passion without learning how to attune to your environment, you're going to run out of energy. You're going to run out of steam. We might have the passion to start up a project, but you're not going to have the resolve to finish it. To get the resolve to finish your project, you're going to learn how to constantly stay attuned to everyone and everything around you. Remain a part of the world. Remain a part of and connect with your friends and family members. Connect with people that give you inspiration, people that give you energy. Finally, the last component of flow is awakening. Awakening is a tricky term, but it means truly stepping into and recognizing the consequences of your actions. Recognizing that everything you do creates a counter reaction. Everything you do creates and brings its own problems. Yeah, you are not just responsible for the good things you do, but also for the negative consequences and the side effects of your actions. So you need to understand how to fully see yourself and to fully see your own actions. That means see your behavior and your consequences of your behavior. See yourself from an outer point of view. Let go of the ego. Stop identifying with the things you do. You're not the things you do. You're not the actions that you take. You are a person experiencing yourself taking action and doing things. Flow is that state of recognizing that you are none of those things. You are not the mistakes you made. You're not the great things you've done. You are a force, an energy that is experiencing yourself doing things. You're experiencing yourself and you're experiencing in yourself both good and bad. You can't block anything out. You can't pretend the negative does not exist. You can't blindly focus on the positive. You can't singularly experience just one thing about yourself. You have to learn to see yourself in a full wider lens. So the flow state is complicated and difficult. You'll find you're stepping into it and you'll find you'll lose it just as quickly. But you can learn to master it. You can learn how to stay inspired, how to stay energetic and how to manage stress by better understanding your personality type. To learn more about this, click the subscribe button and leave a like and I hope to see you all in the next video.